back to my channel dental cafe if you are new to my channel then don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for the latest video so today we are going to discuss about the pulpotomy that is pulp therapy in pediatric dentistry okay then let's begin the video okay first of all what is pulpotomy according to finn in 1995 defined it as the complete removal of coronal portion of the dental pulp do remember only coronal portion of the pulp is removed radicular portion will still remain followed by the placement of a suitable dressing or medicament that will promote the healing and preserve the vitality of the tooth medicaments mean pulp capping agent it was already discussed in the previous video look at the figure and try to understand we have a coronal portion of the tooth and we have a apical or a radicular portion of a tooth. The pulp which is present in the coronal portion is called coronal portion of pulp and the pulp which is present in apical portion is called radicular portion of pulp. So in pulpotomy cases we only removed coronal portion of the pulp and then place the medicament that is pulp capping agent and radicular portion of the pulp is still remain there. Now the classification of pulpotomy. We have two techniques, vital pulpotomy techniques and non-vital pulpotomy techniques also called mortal. Under vital pulp pulpotomy techniques, we have devitalization that is mummification and cauterization. Then we have preservation and regeneration. Under non-vital pulpotomy techniques, we, uh, we have beechwood chrysol and then formocrysol technique. So the first vital pulpotomy technique is devitalization that is mummification and cauterization. Under devitalization we have two types of technique single sitting or a two sitting. In single sitting we will complete pulpotomy in single sitting. In two sitting we will complete pulpotomy in two sitting. In first sitting we will going to place a paste and in the second sitting we will complete the pulpotomy. Under single sitting we have formocrisol pulpotomy electrosurgery pulpotomy and laser under two sitting we have a gaisi trio paste azlic formaldehyde paraform devitalizing paste next vital pulpotomy technique is preservation and regeneration under preservation we have glutaraldehyde ferric sulfate zinc oxide eugenol and under regeneration we have bone morphogenic protein also called bmp calcium hydroxide and then we have mta mineral trioxide aggregate okay what all are the indications of pulpotomy so first one is the carious or mechanical exposure of vital primary teeth and young permanent teeth where inflammation is restricted to coronal pulp only very important point if the inflammation is restricted to coronal pulp then only we will perform vital pulpotomy when tooth is restorable and yeah, pain if present, not spontaneous, not persist after removal of stimulus and tooth with two-third of root length. Then the next indication is hemorrhage from the amputation site is pale red and easy to control. In mixed dentition stage, primary tooth is preferable to a space maintainer. If it is important to retain a primary tooth, act as a space maintainer then we will do a pulpotomy so that it will act as a space maintainer until the permanent dentition will develop now the contraindications of vital pulpotomy is if there is an evidence of internal resorption if there is a presence of interradicular bone loss abscess fistula in relation to teeth Radiographic sign of calcific globules in pulp chamber means in any pathological condition vital pulpit pulpotomy is contraindicated. If the condition is suitable then only we will perform vital pulpotomy. Other contraindications are caries penetrating the floor of pulp chamber and tooth close to natural exfoliation. Of course if tooth is close to natural exfoliation then we will not perform any type of pulpotomy most common pulpotomy performed nowadays is formocrisol pulpotomy so begin with the formocrisol pulpotomy formocrisol was introduced by buckley in 1904 
फॉर्मोक्रोसॉल पल्पोटमी फर्स्ट एडवोकेटेड बाय स्वीट and buckley solution is 1.5 concentration of formocrisol solution what is buckley solution we'll discuss later on but this point is very important for examination point of view now formocrisol solution it contain 19% formaldehyde 35% cresol and 15% glycerin as a vehicle we prepare a 1 is to 5 concentration of this formula we'll add one part of distilled water mix three part of glycerin and add four parts of this preparation to one part of buckley's formocrisol this is how we prepared this formula the mechanism of action formocrisol prevent tissue autolysis by bonding to protein and this is reversible process and it is accomplished without changing the basic overall structure of protein molecule so it will uh, prevent the tissue autolysis by binding to protein and this will prevent the further change in the protein molecule structure now try to understand the pulpotomy of primary teeth step by step it will perform under local anesthesia and isolated with rubber dam Look at the figure we have a deep carious lesion involving coronal pulp only coronal part of the pulp is involved in the carious lesion and all the part of the tooth is sound excavate all caries and remove the dentine roof of the pulp chamber after removal of all the carious portion we'll have a cavity outline first step we are going to excavate all the carious portion the removal of all the carious portion will have a cavity outline you can see in the figure we have a part of caries in the coronal pulp which will remove by a sharp spoon excavators are used to scoop out the coronal pulp and the pulpal remnants as you can see in the figure a part of a coronal pulp is remove with the spoon excavator now we'll clean the pulp chamber with saline and remove all the debris so after the removal of coronal pulp clean the pulp chamber with the saline then place a cotton pellet over the pulp stump to achieve hemostasis and after that we'll place a gauze piece moistened with dilute formocrisol to the pulp for 4 minute so the after cleaning of the cavity removal of the coronal pulp then we will going to place a formocrisol now the role of formocrisol is begin now we'll place a small cotton pellet over this to avoid the contact of tissue with formocrisol it will causes the burning of the or irritation of the tissue and after removal of cotton pellet we'll see a brownish discoloration so remove the cotton pellet and check for fixation brownish discoloration of the pellet as well as the pulp stump is an indicator of fixation if you will notice a brown discoloration it means there is a fixation of radicular pulp now we will go for further step brownish discoloration we'll place a zoe cement in the pulp stump or pulp chamber after zoe we will place temporary cement and then we'll recall patient after one week and restore with a permanent restoration if patient is asymptomatic means there is no pain no top positive then only we'll restore with permanent restoration when patient is become asymptomatic place a stainless steel crown because it is a primary dentition what are the treatment objectives it amputate the infected coronal pulp neutralize any residual infectious process preserve the vitality of radicular pulp by amputing the infected coronal pulp avoid breakdown of periradicular area treat remaining pulp with medicament and avoid dystrophic pulpal changes what are the disadvantages of formocrisol it will cause the local toxicity that is there is no actual healing of the pulp and the tooth become devitalized 
Now the next disadvantage of formocresol is systemic toxicity. Formocresol is absorbed into the systemic circulation from the pulpotomy site. It will get absorbed in many organs through the pulpotomy sites and excretion is via kidney and lungs. But it is very rare. And some amount of formocresol will remain bound in the cell of liver, kidney and lungs. It have cytogenic and mutagenic effect on the organs due to its ability to denature nucleic acid by denaturing the nucleic acid it will cause the cytogenic or the mutagenic effect on the organs or the dna system next and the very important disadvantage is damage to the succedaneous tooth it is seen that one ml of formocresol diffused through the apical foramen in three minutes as you can see in the figure, we have a deciduous dentition. If famocresol is uh, diffused through the apical foramen, it will affect the permanent dentition. It will cause the high risk for the formation of enamel defect in the permanent dentition following the use of famocresol in a primary teeth. If we use 3 ml of famocresol, there is a chances of enamel defect in the permanent dentition as it diffuse through the apex. The important point, what if bleeding cannot be controlled after removal of coronal pulp? Is the help of pulp is questionable? Or we still proceed or continue pulpotomy or not? In such situation, extraction or intermediate sedative dressing will be considered. If the bleeding is still continue after removal of coronal pulp, then we will not proceed pulpotomy. We will do extraction or intermediate dressing. I hope this video is helpful for you. If you have any problem related to this topic, do comment on comment section. Thank you for watching.